and Carol. <laughs> mm. um, I'm so full of, I don't know, but uh, joy and and it feels so huge to be here, be able to live here amongst the messengers, amongst David and this phenomenal world, worldwide ministry. And also there's some fear that I won't give up all of these beliefs that have sabotaged my life and kept me in compromise and people pleasing and other stuff. And uh, so there's concerns about the body and using magic and uh, this fear of death that I was working on. And it feels like I'm missing something. I'm not getting it deeply. I'm not uh, quite there yet. And I don't know how to express or even ask for what I need because I don't know what that is. But there's a sense of urgency in in getting to it, getting to the core, getting to the, what this belief is that's strangling me, uh, it keep me stuck. I know it's in my head, I know it's my beliefs. You know, that's where it really is about trusting the spirit, that the spirit is the healer. You know, the ego wants to always, its whole function is to make us feel guilty, you know, and the spirit's function is to let us experience our guiltlessness. And so it's like bringing these beliefs up to the surface and trusting that the spirit, the spirit really will take care of things. And it's you continually doing that. And I know that uh, last week you were having all these thoughts of your body and the death coming up. But one of the things that I saw that was the total miracle for you was um, because the ego projects and the Holy Spirit extends. And we were talking about that. And, you know, you can bring the belief up to the surface, but the ego likes when we sit there and try to analyze and figure out things. You know, it's like really giving the belief to the Spirit and then getting into your extension. Like, that's what heals. It's the light heals. It washes. And... You know, the belief, which you said it's been there for a long time, is going to continue to come up. And it's like just not judging it. Oh, okay, there's my body belief again. There's whatever it is, whatever I need to do. But to continue to extend. And I've just watched you in this extension. It's like it raises you up out of that, you know, fear and this contraction. And I just feel like that's the most beautiful. It's actually the demonstration you're practically applying it and you know and you know if you get that the fear comes in that you think that you won't be able to fix it well you won't be able to fix it you're not going to be able to fix it the Holy Spirit is the one that's going to fix it and you just continually being so honest and transparent is so beautiful to watch because you can't fake it and I also see too that like this last week yesterday you were saying how I'm going to share with everybody how you haven't been really doing a whole lot in form. And I think that we're all being called into this deeper, deeper, deeper level of no compromise. And we're all doing that together. And it's this old patterns of people pleasing and all this mm -hmm. stuff that we do for approval and wanting to be loved and accepted and all these things. And I feel like just like the last couple of days you've been in this real healing in not doing that, uh, especially with us getting prepared for this big community thing. It felt like the spirit was totally flowing through me at this time. 
and it's been beautiful. And it's funny how that works because you weren't feeling it. And then yesterday, it was so miraculous because I was going to make potato salad. And I said, you know, I'm actually not feeling for me to do that. And you said, I actually am feeling it. You know, and it's like us doing that together back and forth, like this kind of real authentic. It's almost like when I stepped back and you were ready to do it. Mm -hmm. And that is being in the flow of the Spirit. Like the Spirit got you now. And this morning, I didn't want to make that. The coleslaw. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's, there's miracles happening all the time. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like it's just that trust that is just continuous over and over again. The Spirit got us. You know, the Spirit got us. And we have just such a beautiful gift here to be in that extension and that service of the Spirit. And we also have the time to go and get in our direct experience of God. Well, <coughs> I think what I need right now is something to get my mind straight when it gets off onto this, oh, you've, you've got this belief, you're, you're attacking your body with this belief, and the, the symptoms are evidence of what I'm doing. Mm. And it's constant, this feeling like I'm being choked. Mm. And so that I, I need to reframe this somehow, this, this experience, so that it's my focus and my attention isn't on this. Well, that's where the ego wants, the ego really just wants to rule your mind. That's its whole function. It wants to torment us in our mind. And so it's like, okay, there's the problem. Let's look at it. There's the distraction. Okay, Holy Spirit, there it is. I'm going to hand it to you, but I'm going to get into to extension here. I just see it works because you're not suppressing or denying anything. And maybe you need to go to the doctor or something like that. It's like that's not what we're saying, not to go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. Whatever's going to keep your mind focused in the extension. Because if it becomes a distraction, then it's not helpful to the spirit. Like, I just love that thing with Helen Shuckman. The spirit always gave her everything that she thought that she needed so that she could get her work done. And it took her a long time to get it done. David said she, he used to say she was in so much resistance it took her seven years to get that book out. You know, and that was a lot of resistance. But he was letting her do what she felt that she needed to do. And that's how the spirit is with us, you know. If we need to go to the dentist or, you know, whatever it is that's going to help us not be distracted. If it becomes a distraction, then it's like, okay, let's look at it and what can I do? Maybe I need some magic. Okay, good, that'll get me and then get into my extension. You know, and it's, the ego wants us to feel guilty. Oh, that's, you know, you're guilty because you have some symptom. But really, there's only one problem, and that's the thoughts about it. It's your interpretations mm -hmm. about it, you know? Well, and I use the magic, and that doesn't work. And I think, well, it's this, this belief. It's, it's but it, something going on there. Well, it's whatever's tormenting your mind. It isn't really what's going on in your body at all. It might I seem know. like it's the body, but it's like, it's the thoughts about it. There's oh, what something I'm, that I'm not aware of that I'm... I'm doing that that keeps this symptom going. Mm. But see, sometimes I'll tell you something, you know, like people think, you know, uh, just because that you don't have any symptoms, that's going to make your mind. It's almost like if I fix this out here, then I won't have this problem. But the problem never was out here. The problem isn't in the body. The problem is in the mind. My interpretation with the belief that I am a body and that I'm doing yeah, something wrong. That's the belief, yeah. And I know, like, for me, like, even years ago, you know, I used to think I was manifesting and thought that I had some power. So when bad things started to happen to me after years of this glorious thing, I thought, oh, my God, I'm doing something wrong. There's something wrong in my mind. You know, I need to fix this. And there was just this miraculous gift that David gave me at that time because... I really got into all this guilt and thinking I was so guilty because I wasn't getting it because all these bad things were happening. And I'm just telling you straight out, it's, you know, I'm not responsible for any error. I'm responsible for the correction, no matter if I have ulcers growing all over my body. And the correction is just turning it over to the Holy Spirit. The correction is to see that, you know, God is the cause and I'm the effect. That's the only true cause and effect that there is. I'm not the cause of this. I'm actually denying that I'm the cause 
You know, like, I'm God is the cause and I am the effect. That's the only true cause and effect that there is. So my beliefs are not causing anything. Your beliefs are not causing anything. Your interpretation. It's all about your interpretation. You're interpreting something because you have something going on in your body. It's always my interpretation that's the problem. So you think that your body and you have, you think that you can order your thoughts mm -hmm. and that you have power over your thoughts mm -hmm. and that your, pa and your thoughts are like causing some problem. Mm -hmm. It's almost like you think that you're God mm -hmm. and that you've usurped the power of God and now you've taken over and, and all these terrible things are happening. But really, that's, that's just the trick of the ego. You're not, you're not causing anything. You're, this, you're the, uh, this is it. So my responsibility for the correction then is not correcting my thoughts? Well, you're not the healer. The Holy Spirit is. See, you think that you have some part to my play. My correction is turning it over, over to the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Yeah, I thought that's what I said a minute ago. But, yeah. You have to hand it over and trust that the Spirit got it. And it's, trust. But if the symptoms don't stop, it's not like doing it so that the symptoms stop, because the problems weren't the symptoms. The problem was my interpretation. It's, it's all about experiencing peace of mind. That's it, no matter what's happening. Yeah. Like, it's like Jesus when he was walking to the cross. He wasn't like saying, wow, I really am causing some big mess here. Mm. He wasn't thinking that. A guiltless mind cannot suffer. And he was interpreting it correctly as the false is false. That merely looks on devastation reminds the mind that what it sees is false. Mm -hmm. You still believe it ha is real and has some power. Yeah. And so really it's coming back, you know. And I wouldn't be using magic if I didn't believe that. Well, but it's <laughs> even that. See, I still feel that there's some guilt underneath this yeah. thing with the magic. And yeah. it's just letting go of the judgment, good or bad, right or wrong. It's the judgment that's the problem. Oh, okay. You're judging it. Yeah. Oh, that's good and that's bad. It's duality. That's what causes the suffering. Yeah, like me and Jason were talking uh, the other night about sex. He said, well, you know, that's about pleasure. He goes, isn't it pleasure? And I said, eating a cheeseburger is pleasurable. Every, there's so much pleasure. So then the ego judges it and interprets it and says, uh, oh, that's bad, because it was pleasure. But it's still duality, right and wrong. Oh, a cheeseburger's okay to eat, but it, having sex isn't. They're both seemingly pleasures, and then there's all this guilt because there's pleasure. But really, it's, seen they're, it's all the same, pleasure and pain. Oh, now that's bad, and that's good. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. Forgiveness, and forgiving, and forgiving, and forgiving, and we look forward, and like come up what needs to come up and all glory to God that we're together to be able to authentically bring it to the light and then choose the miracle again yeah. whatever it is you know okay that that helps me <laughs> interpret this differently yeah. and it's always to remember who I am who am I okay I forgot I thought I'm a body I think I'm um, What's the truth? Yeah. yeah. It's beautiful. Thank you for sharing with me. You, you've been so many conversations just just like this one with me. I love you, I love you too. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm.